And because of that offensive line, Keith, the Hurricanes are running the ball better this year than they have in the last several. Derek Harris, the tight end, comes in as the extra blocker on third down and one, and they go to his side. Stewart carries across the 30, up to the 31, and gets the first down. So the Orange men give up the first down grudgingly, but they do have to give it up to the power of Stewart. Dan Conley and Antoine Pons are the linebackers on the inside. Conley is well advertised as having had 10 knee operations. Antoine Pons is also dinged up considerably from the earlier part of the season. The down three guys, the big guys in the front, need to get some pressure. That would help Syracuse tremendously. Out of the shotgun, the pass is deflected. It's intercepted! It is a great play by Dan Conley to keep the ball in the air and come down with it for the interception. It was Kevin Abrams who made the first contact on it and forced the ball on the tip. Syracuse went to a nickel defense because Miami went to four wide receivers. The ball was tipped up in the air and intercepted. Here's Conley. He's a middle linebacker out over one of the wide receivers. Nice play there by Abrams, the, the quarterback, and Conley gets his first interception of the year. That is Costa's 11th interception. But not Can his you... fault. Can you imagine a kid who's had 10 knee operations playing football oh, like that? He says, this is the reason I went through all that, to play against the Miamis and the Boston Colleges of the world, who are a big uh, rival of Syracuse. First down from the 45-yard line. Into the middle goes Kirby Dardar, a senior out of Tampa, and there's not much there. Kevin Mason waited his turn, and did you know that he was the number two rated passer in Division I-A quarterback standings? He waited and waited and waited, and finally Marvin Graves was gone, and Kevin Mason got his chance, and he has been the starter all season long. And he's improving, Keith, each game. Both teams coming into the ball game at 6-1. and one. Here's your option. Mason turns it up and runs it down to the 36-yard line. That is a yard short of the first down. He looked a little surprised that much room he did. as he turned up the field. Kirby Dardar... Uh, who has a big fan fan club here in Syracuse <laughs> and up and down the coast come out of Tampa to play ball at Syracuse 188 pounder he's real he's a good one a big fan fan club huh? <laughs> yeah there's Geraldine mama Terry Morris is a 217 pound sophomore the fullback as they go to a wishbone set now they're 54 percent this season on third down conversions and the crowd is very respectful, as you can see, for the home team as they grew quite quiet and waited for the snap count. Ray Lewis brings down Dardar, but he gets the first down. We mentioned Ray Lewis, number 52. He's a sophomore, leads the Big East in tackles, knows where it's going, gets into the backfield, gets a part of the tackle, but not enough for the first down for Syracuse. And Lewis is a true sophomore out of Lakeland. Started last year as a freshman when injuries uh, forced him into the game. As a matter of fact, he showed up very big in Colorado last year. He's an outstanding player. Great leader also. Mason back keeps the ball. Looks downfield, pulls it down, takes off, and takes the lick. Well, we have to tell you what, they blew the whistle. And depends on where they mark it, but they blew the whistle pretty early, long before he was on the ground. The first hit was by C.J. Richardson. The offensive front for Syracuse, and these are the people that have to hold the fort today if the Orange men are to have any success. Wallabaugh, the center, is the anchor for it. 6'4", 294, a senior from Hamburg. The ball is put down at the 30, so they gave him all that he had earned, even though the whistle did sound a bit early. Second down and five. Ball at the Miami 30, go the other way with the option. He's got daylight over there. He's got a first down. He's still going. He's inside the 20, out of bounds at the 17-yard line. It is the defense that is the real true strength of these Miami Hurricanes, however, as 
They are anchored in the middle by Pat Riley and Warren Sapp, and Sapp in particular is holded, heralded as a great defensive lineman, but Riley ain't bad. And if you get past those two, <laughs> then you got that howitzer looking at you in the middle, Ray Lewis. The DBs are good. The corners, particularly agile and quick. Richardson is the headhunter in that crowd. He will take a piece of you with it if you get in his neighborhood. It is first down of the 17 of Miami. Ball is handed inside to Dardar. And some nifty running by Kirby Dardar. Puts the ball down near the 10 yard line for a seven yard pickup. From behind the offense, number 74 pulling is a left tackle. That's Tootin. He gets a block on Lewis. A nice job by the interior lineman, Woolaball, Prescott, and Ellsworth. Nice pickup for uh, the Orangeman. Timeout charge to Syracuse. At 9.43 to go in the first quarter, the Orange men are threatening. Hurricane defensive coordinator Greg McMacken. Hurricanes have not allowed an offensive TD in the Big East this year. Trying to call timeout. Must have uh, too many players on the field. Somebody's trying to run off. They got him off. Confused. Now confused. he still wants a timeout because they're confused. Yep. And Syracuse came out of the I formation, which they had not seen. And he wanted timeout to get his troops organized. Well, So a little shaky start here for the Miami defensive core as they get a little off balance in the dome and it's not hard here folks I'm telling you Nebraska came here in 1984 ranked number one in the country and got beat 17 to 9 so it can happen next Saturday there's a college football double header here on ABC Sports it begins at noon now 12 o'clock noon Eastern time next week that's 11 in the middle of the country. Lou Holtz and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame will be down in Orlando against the Florida State Seminoles. And you know there's going to be some feeling in that ball game on the part of the Seminoles. Then at 3.30 Eastern time, the number two team in the country, not in my opinion, but in the opinion of some, undefeated Penn State tackles Big Ten rival Illinois at Illinois. Very big, very big. And then undefeated Alabama will have Mississippi State. So check your local listings for the game in your area. Or check with your cable operator for pay-per-view. And the Notre Dame FSU game is at noon? Yes, yes. Noon. Paul Pasqualoni, fourth season Syracuse. You can see his record there. Very intense man. Very intense. Been here a good long time. Coached under Dick McPherson here. He's a Penn State graduate. So now we finally get around to second down and four. And here they come. Inside the 10, Malcolm Thomas, a sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, who almost went to Georgia Southern, but decided finally to come north, and they're tickled to death to have him in Syracuse, and he is a burner. But one of the things in talking to the defensive coordinator for the Hurricanes, McMacken, he said, we're just going to play it basic the first series. Syracuse has played one game in the last 26 days. They've had two bye weeks, and in between those bye weeks, they played Temple. He said, we're not sure exactly what they're going to give us. We're going to play it plain and simple until we see a couple of drives and see what they're doing. They've got it first down and goal at the Miami Six. They give it to Dardar, and he will lose. Number 90 made the initial contact. Kenny Holmes, a sophomore from Vero Beach, and there's a loss on the play of a couple of yards. That time the Miami defense fired. I mean, they really came, and you'll see that a lot. They do that in order to keep the double team off Sam. Second down and goal now from the eighth. Double wide to the right. Tight end is over there. Syracuse is always thrown to the tight end. Forced in the middle by Warren Sapp, number 76, and right behind Sapp came number 54, James Burgess. They turn him back in and get him at the pen. Sapp is second on this team in tackles, and that's very high for a defensive lineman. Number 76 in the white jersey just blows up field. He is right in the quarterback's face. He's quick enough. 
He's second in tackles, doesn't get that one, but he should have gotten credit for making the play. He makes the players around him so much better because of his quickness. It is third down and goal, and they have moved from the six back to the ten. Pass. Ball is deflected. Miami pops on it. It was not a forward pass. It was not loose before the ball started forward, before the arm made a move or in set, did it? Miami has the ball, and Syracuse is turned away. Well, as advertised, 76, Warren Sapp. We talked to him before, about, about him before the game. There he is. And if, it's, if there's any doubt whether the, if it's a fumble or an incomplete pass, the ruling is incomplete pass. But there was no doubt in the judgment of the three officials who were within 15 feet of it. Miami takes over the ball first down at their own 14-yard line with Stewart, the single back. He's got the ball. And he comes barreling across the 20 to the 21. He picked up about seven yards on that carry. When they lay their ears back, that is a ferocious defense. The defense uh, is, uh, is all right for Syracuse, but the offensive line in this running game is, is pretty good for Miami. So the offense given the opportunity here by the defense, second down and short four, long three. Stewart again. Not much this time as the Orange men gang up and bring him down. Let's go back and take a look at the fourth down play. Syracuse passing the ball. Fourth down. He, 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 one of the problems was he didn't get the center exchange clearly. His arm, his arm is going up, and that is all that you have to do to declare it an incomplete pass. His arm was going up. The motion to throw the ball was in progress. Third down and one. Stewart didn't get there, and Miami will have to punt it away. The Syracuse defense reacting well. Now let's find out what's been happening with the Penn State Nittany Lions. Here is John Sunder. Well, Keith, the question this week, who's number one? Penn State, Nebraska, you make your choice, but how about Kajana Carter now as the front runner for the Heisman Trophy? Certainly looks like it on this run. 80 yards on the carry for a touchdown. 20 carries for 192 yards and an average of almost 10 yards a carry. They lead, Keith. The punt is away by Dane Pruitt and kicks out of bounds downfield uh, did not go out of bounds it stayed right on the chalk and just kind of wobbled its way down over about the 30 yard line so he got about 20 yards on the road and it'll be Syracuse ball first down at the 30. CFA College Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Lexus makers of the faster and roomier 1995 LS 400 by the beer that's colder, bolder, yet smooth as ice. Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. Old Spice Sensitive. It's alcohol-free to take the heat out of aftershave. And Payne Weber. We believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. Let's look at the last punt. Uh, Syracuse knows Miami has had problems. Special teams. So 24 was kind of there, and the foot yeah, came down Pruitt, on the shoulder pad. Yeah, but I think Pruitt, I think the, the official was there, and he, he ruled that Pruitt left his foot out and tried to make the contact. I think that's a good non-call. All right, Syracuse to the ball, first down, 30-yard line. Last time they had it, went 10 plays, didn't get any points out of it. Edmund Robinson and uh, Malcolm Thomas are in the backfield as Mason uh, hands off inside to the fullback. And Robinson, a 215-pound sophomore from Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. We'll pop in there for a couple of yards on the play. We're pretty sure that we've gone past 50,000 in the dome today. 
because every ticket, this was the toughest ticket they've had around here in a while. Yes, it was. First sellout of the year, too. Second down, call it seven. Pass, pass! Mason still got it. He's got a man if you let it go, but he held on to it. Now it goes over the middle, and he's incomplete. And there is a penalty flag downfield, and Miami is going to get whacked with a penalty here, I think, because Kennard Lang, uh, the defensive end, decked the quarterback over there, and it was Shimon Wilson who came over and separated C.J. Richardson from the ball. Personal foul against Miami. It happened on the sideline. Richardson, in the meantime, is shaken up after the collision with Shimon Wilson. Richardson had the ball intercepted, and uh, but let's go back to the Lang thing with the quarterback. Now, the ball's clearly gone. They're on the sidelines. The shove out of bounds. Yellow flag. That's just a bad play by Lang. He lowered his head once the ball was thrown by the quarterback. On the defense. 15 yard penalty. Once he lowered his down. head, he didn't see when the ball was gone. He was just going to hit him. He ran all that way. He says, if I run this far, I'm going to hit him. But that collision between Wilson and C.J. Richardson, C.J. had the ball in his hands and had it intercepted. Now watch this collision. Well, number six, uh, Sermon Wilson right there saves an interception because Richardson was ready to intercept the ball. The Wilson weighs 220 pounds. He's going that fast. He, that's quite a collision. First down after the penalty now. The ball comes out to the 48-yard line. And Mason got a problem. Throws the ball sideways, and he's almost overrun by the Miami defense before he can get rid of it. Good, good turn, Keith. It's just the quickness of this hurricane defense forced him to throw it so quickly that he wasn't ready for it. Tonight, an ABC Family Movie premiere. One of your favorite stars back, Ernest, Scared Stupid. Tonight, followed by an all-new commish here on ABC. So put the ball after the errant uh, pitch back at the 35-yard line, and C.J. Richardson checks back into the ball game now. Second down and 21. Mason chased out of the pocket. Throws underneath to Wilson. And Tremont Wilson is knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line, so it'll be third down and about 13 for Syracuse. You know, there are some big plays to be had against Miami when they're in the sellout mode, but they just don't give you a chance to get rid of the ball. It's got to happen very quickly. Yep, it really does. you got to be ready, and you got to be quick. Florida State wins. Yellow indicates the game is over, and that is the winning team. Florida State winning big over Georgia Tech, who came out in yellow uniforms today also. Third down and 13. Low snap. Mason gets his pass off, throws it very, very hard, and the pass is incomplete. He was off the hands of Malcolm Thomas, and James Burgess just jumped all over him. Big old linebacker just flattened him. So it'll be punting time for Syracuse. The defenses are holding up pretty well. AM was stunned last week by SMU. Duke bounces back to beat Virginia today. What a shocker that is. Bit of a surprise, huh? Yeah. Sean Reale is in the ball game. Averaging 42 and a half yards on 30 punts. Jamie German is waiting. He can haul it. It's a good punt. It's a dandy. Kicks into the end zone. will come out for the 20. 55-yard punt by Sean. And we'll see the Hurricanes trying to get it cranked up in a moment. 4.49 go in the first quarter of play. Miami with the ball now. First down at their own 20. And you've got Larry Jones in at the single back now. A 240-pound running back. Conley drops out, reading pass, throw it right down the middle, and he read it right but couldn't get to it as the ball is thrown to Gerard Daphnis, the tight end, and a first down up near the 40. The defensive secondary for Syracuse, Abrams, Bevel, the two corners, pretty good. Not too big, though. You've got to go 5'9", 5'9", 5'8", 
And uh, obviously they'll be looking to match up those corners against those six foot four inch wide receivers. Now, and those wide receivers of the Hurricanes, some of them, Jones and uh, Yatiel Green especially, can jump. Cody Jones is unusually large for a free safety at 6'5". A lot of Joneses around, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, seven of them in the Miami team. This is Larry Jones carrying the ball. And uh, Larry will have uh, the ball at the 46. And a pickup of six on the play. because he once he sees and reads his keys he gets there maybe a step quicker than a, a less experienced linebacker so the loss moves the ball back inside the 45 to the 44 and it's third down and five Frank Costa gets his pass away and the pass is incomplete and almost intercepted by Kevin Abram he stepped in front of Jamie German and almost came out of there with the ball. And so the Syracuse defense grows more confident. Take a look from behind the quarterback. This is a ground level. Costa looks left, looks left all the way. The ball is thrown a little late. That's why the defensive back, number four Abrams, gets around in front of the wide receiver. Poor timing there. Dane threw it in for his second punt. This will be returned. Harrison, a wide receiver, comes back to the 40-yard line, and a penalty flag is thrown back inside the 30. Look out for blocking in the back. The illegal use of hand. 36-yard punt, 21-yard return, but I think that 21 yards is going to be damage for the penalty. Yep. You get a lot of that these days, don't you? And it goes back to the rules change where they freed up the arm. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. And took away blocking below the waist, too. That added to it. One of the things that the Orangemen need to do is get some yardage and some field position off of the special teams. This was a pretty good punt return, but it's going to be negated by the penalty. All right, Roy Willis and Kirby Dardar set up in the backfield. And the ball is back at the 19-yard line, and Syracuse is backing up, losing because of mistakes here in the kicking game. But this is Kirby Dardar who comes busting up the middle and finds enough daylight to get out of there and get it all the way to the 31. So he picks up a first down, and now the Orange have a little room. Brought down by C.J. Richardson. Richardson back in the ballgame after going out on that near interception a little earlier. This is the eighth start of uh, Kevin Mason's career, the quarterback. Like you said, Keith, earlier, he waited four years behind Marvin Graves. He goes to the 44-yard line. What are they doing to Warren Sapp? Where are they finding the room in the middle? Getting past Sapp and Riley. And knocking him out of there. Well, we'll show you, Keith. This time, nothing. Sapp is right over the center. Watches. Everybody's just going to straight block. Center, Wool of Ball is going to take Sapp on man for man. Right there. And he just gets a good block from the fullback. That's just straight blocking. 
and a nice job by that offensive line. Alcon Thomas is the tailback. First down from the 44. Thomas finds a little room over the left side. He's thrown down by Kennard Lang, but the throw by Lang was about a four-yard throw, and it goes down as a gain. Got to throw him the other way. Take a look at the offensive line. Woola ball. That's Ellsworth. They're double-teaming the... Uh, over the nose tackle ledger 73 comes around it ain't pretty there's not a lot of room but talking to George de Leon yesterday the offensive court he says listen you don't get big yardage against Miami you got to be patient you got to take five and six yard gains second down and seven there's your freeze option doesn't work too well Dardar has to pick it up on the back coming back this way he's got a, he's got a convoy and a first down at the Miami 43 yard line I thought that one might go. Freeze option was freeze the middle linebacker. Now, good good defensive play by the linebacker on the outside. Now you're right, Keith. He's got a convoy. There's only one white shirt and a bunch of blue ones. That's Wilson, number nine, and he did a nice job of just holding things off until he had some help from his friends. Malcolm Thomas is back in. Ball on the 43 of Miami. First down, Syracuse. Mason drops back to throw, lets it go deep. And it is incomplete, intended for Shimon Wilson. But he had two Hurricanes running right with him. Yes, he did. Number nine, Chad Wilson. Number 12, Carlos Jones. That's the poison in this option offense, and the Hurricanes played it very well. You have to come up and play the option, play the option, play the toss man five, six, seven, eight times, and then Pasqualoni and his offense all of a sudden is going to go for the big one, and there was two Hurricanes there covering him. Actually, by the time the ball came down, Pearson had joined the party. Yeah. <laughs> Three. Our Dardar is back in. It's second down and ten. Ball on the Miami 43. Dardar. Oh, there's some daylight in the middle of that line. They're running inside and outside of those tackles. And he's all the way down to the 30-yard line. They get the 29. Well, it's second down and 10. It's long yardage situation. Defensive end is going to come upfield. Now watch the tackle. Ledger is going to come this way. It's a tackle trap. They're running inside the end, and Ledger 73 is going to block the linebacker. Everybody else on the left side blocked down. They double team sap. Good running play. Dardar has 54 yards. He's got the ball again, and he's got some pretty good pursuit on his back this time. As a fellow named Lewis, number 52, comes streaking across the field to bring him down. He the plays that are working for the Orangemen are the ones that are going straight up the middle. Anything east and west where you have the speed of these linebackers, they're shutting it down pretty good. And the first quarter is over, and the home folks like it. There is no score after the first 15 minutes, and the home team is threatening. To look at the first quarter stats, uh, Syracuse leads in plays and in first downs. The interesting thing right here Syracuse rushing the football 74 yards in the first quarter Miami only averages in a whole game giving up 75 yards they lead the conference and are sixth in the nation in rushing defense Syracuse is doing what they wanted to do and that is run the football they've been very stingy Virginia Tech was what minus 14 last week yes, they were all right, Syracuse to the ball. It's second down and a little more than 10. You got Thomas in there, number 17. Dardar's in there, number 42. Here comes the reverse with Harrison. And he's inside the 20. First down for Syracuse. Nice call by the Orangemen, George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator. Again, they had uh, some time to prepare. They had last week off, and then they played. They had a week off before the Temple game. 
De Leon said they had to throw out about one third of their offense because of the speed and quickness of Erickson's defense. They're the coaches for Syracuse, but they eliminated some things and put in a few choice things to take advantage of that speed. First down at the 19 of Miami. Syracuse has been threatening all along. This is Dardar again running inside, and Ray Lewis takes off his helmet, and he is just jumping up and down. He wants the whole club. What's going on? And then they're running right through there. The ball is at the 14 now, and a pickup on the play of five. What he's going That's about. right. He's got tackled by Willaball, the center. <laughs> it's hard to run with a guy hanging on your leg. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> like concrete boots for Mason behind the line of scrimmage. It's Burgess, number 54, that penetrated and got him. And there will be a loss back to about the 19-yard line, a loss of five, and you'll be looking at third down and ten. Anything wide. It's not working. The option that's too slow. There's too much speed for Miami. Burgess 54 puts that time. The, the, the things that are working are the, the plays inside or that misdirection play like the reverse. North and south. Ascoloni wants a timeout. So Paul will bring his offensive unit to the sidelines with 13 minutes and 15 seconds to go in the half. They're looking at third and 10, and he is looking for a score. All right, Syracuse moving down here. At, they were down to the 14. They've been forced back to near the 19. They've had the ball now for 10 plays in this current possession. Number 88, the tight end. Tight ends always seem to be part of the Syracuse offense. He has not seen the ball. Miami is yet. number. Miami leads the nation in pass defense, and Syracuse is not very good throwing it. They got the tight end out there wide this time. They flexed him out about seven, eight yards. He's going down the middle. They throw it out there to Dardar instead. And he won't get to the first down marker, but he did get down to about the 12-yard line, and they are certainly within reach of the field goal try. It's a nice call. If you're not a good passing team, and as I mentioned, Syracuse is last in the conference throwing the football. You throw a safe little screen to your running back with a with a with a lineman out in front of him, give him a chance to pick it up, and if not, maybe you can get on the scoreboard first. And here they come. Number 19, field. Olinda Moray is out there. Their field goal kicking hasn't been real good this year. Only two of six. This youngster has a powerful leg, but he has not been all that accurate. He's one out of three so far. He took over the place kicking uh, from Reale. Play the game. Offense. So Syracuse burns the clock five yards, and that'll back him up five, and it won't bother him a lot, I don't think. Probably even give him a better angle at it. Probably did it on purpose, because we watched him yesterday in practice, and he was hitting the ball well beyond 50 yards. <laughs> I don't know, yards. I don't know guys. These field goal kickers, some of them, uh, like I said, they, they haven't been very successful. Moray's one of three, and Reale was one of three. And uh... Mason's holding. Kevin Mason. It's up. Folks down there say it's good, and so do the officials. And Syracuse takes the lead against Miami with 12.09 to play in the first half. It was November 21, 1992, Miami at Syracuse. Syracuse quarterback Marvin Graves leading the Orange men down to the Miami 23 on the final play of the game. Tight end Chris Getney stopped at the three. Miami wins 16 to 10. And don't think that these Hurricanes don't remember those things, Keith. They won big a year ago down in Florida. Like I said, the building is part of the story. The, when last, time, the last time they were here, they had problems. Murray will kick it off, and Jamie German and Al Shipman are deep for the Hurricanes. Knuckleball, tough to handle, gets past him and goes beyond the field of play and will come out to the 20. 
He gets some whip on the ball. That thing came skittering down there. It looked like a Wilhelm specialty. Like a shot. Oh, what has Miami done? The first three times out of the box, uh, they've had an interception and two punts, but look at the plays. Four plays and out, three, and then four again. Starting position has not been very good and is not good on this drive. Stewart is the single back. Big James is back in there. Three wide outs. This is no place to be changing uh, your play at the line of scrimmage. Stewart running outside. Down at the 20. You're not going to do any of that check with me stuff at the line of scrimmage in this building. This week, ABC's Monday Night Football will be in Dallas as Emmett Smith and the Super Bowl champion Cowboys host their NFC Eastern Division rival, the New York Giants. Monday at 9 here on ABC's Monday Night Football. There's a look at Norm Gerber. He was telling me yesterday that the thing he wants to do is stop the Miami running game. Stop the running game and take away the big plays, force them to be patient to move the ball down the field. He stopped the running game pretty well. Four so wide outs out of the shotgun. Pass is completed. Pass is caught by A.C. Tellison. And he's taken down at the 27-yard line. Tellison's another one of those big wide outs at 6'2", 212. This time, a free safety named Jones, 6'5", 207, took him down. Miami has a lot of depth at the wide receiver position. They say the younger ones are better than, than, than the older ones, the better ones. So it's going to be nothing but good receivers for Erickson for the next few years. Third down and two. Stewart back in. Stewart's got it. And the first down. Dropped at the 37. The Orange men are not timid about going after Stewart. As a matter of fact, they know that uh, you got to be pretty sure for one man to take him down. So they send two and three and sometimes yell for four. Keith, in a situation talking about checking off, if you do want to check off or think about it, you can't act like you're checking off. You can't move your head one side or the other because the fans will see you doing it. So if you do check off, do it kind of nonchalantly. First down at the 37. Costa pumps and lets it go. And it's in the seats. Trying to get a hook and go out there on Bevel. The defensive back, Greg Smith, the offensive line coach, doing a good job. And Rich Olson, the offensive coordinator, trying to get something big. Syracuse is doing a good job, Keith, of substituting five guys at a time. They'll go from their regular package to a nickel package, six defensive backs, and better pass rushers in the game, which they have now. Back to the four wideouts for the Canes on second down and ten. Costas pass, caught, first down, midfield. They get the 49-yard line of Syracuse as Chris T. Jones, 6'4 and 210, reels it in. Miami offense in the past years, Keith, has been heavy to the passing game. They've had quarterbacks that have, whenever you would use a one back, three wide receiver, maybe four wide receiver offense, the quarterback better be good at getting the ball to those people. If you're not consistent at that position, you're going to have problems, and that's why Erickson has gone to more of a running game this year. 27 catches now for Chris T. Jones on the season. And the crowd jumps on him right now. Yeah. Give it to Stewart. And James Stewart now as the offensive front blew a hole for him. Rambles on down to the Syracuse 37-yard line in a first down. While we catch our breath here and they move the chains, I uh, remind you there are seven Joneses on the Miami roster. And the starting free safety for Syracuse is one. Tony Jones. <laughs> <laughs> So Jones may be covering Jones. First down from the Orange 37. Miami starting to move it a little bit now. First real movement they've had with the ball. Costa looks and goes to the corner and 
Tremendous jump ball. It is incomplete. It was Yaphil Green at 6-3, matched up against Kevin Abrams, the quarterback at 5-9, and Green couldn't make the catch. You're right. As advertised, Green is a good leaper. He caught a ball against Virginia Tech last week. Should have caught that. Just one. didn't catch it. Yep. They had what they wanted. Yep. 18 Jones there is 6'5. He's the free safety. They had him out of it. But you know, you do that maybe three or four times a game, Keith. You're going to catch half of them. Second down and 10. That'll be offside. Syracuse defender trying to anticipate the snap and got caught in the neutral zone. Offside defense, illegal contact, five yard penalty. Second Daniel minute. Ferguson, number one, is in the backfield now. He is a running back for Miami. And here comes the five player substitution again for Syracuse defense, and here's 20. Well, Keith, if, if I'm not mistaken, it seems like every time that Miami audibilizes, they go to a running play, which seems to be logical, because if you're going to audibilize, the backs and the offensive linemen can hear you, the receivers can't. Keith? Ferguson is a single back here, way deep. He goes a yard deeper than Stewart. Not as big, but quicker. And gets inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Well, you've been hung out there a few times, Swanee, when uh, you knew the quarterback had called an audible and you couldn't hear him. It's a difficult position to be put in because you've got to keep looking to see where he is. What'd you do, Swanee, when they checked off and you didn't know what was going on? Well, what I did was I looked in at the ball and just to see whether it was going to be a running play or a passing play. And if it was a pass play? Then I ran something somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I ran for an open spot. Raise your hand. <laughs> Larry Jones is a single back. He's got the ball. And the Orange men have him short of the line of scrimmage. Or no more than the line of scrimmage and certainly short of the first down. It was third down and about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. And the Orange stacked it up, led by that little corner, Bryce Pebble. And number 50 on the outside is Antoine Pons. Number three, Bevel is the corner, Keith, the small corner that we were talking about. He comes up. He's pretty good physical. He may have to make the tackle. Hurricanes are going for it. Canes going on fourth down and two. Larry Jones gets it. So a little bit of old jawbone football there. I'm coming. You try to stop me. I think that's a good call by Erickson. It was kind of long for a field goal. You need to get him in there. You want to be physical. You think you can run the football. They'll bring the chains out. Our angle looked from here as if he might have it. But I don't know. Uh, that angle, I don't know if he had it or not. Yeah, I don't either. Didn't make it. Didn't make it. Didn't make it. Nope. Ten plays and no points. Seventy seven is Lumelski. Sixty six Simonette. But it's the defensive guys we should be talking about. This defense, not a lot of respect coming into the ball game. They're 86th in the nation in total defense. They're not like they're not playing like that this afternoon. It'll be Malcolm Thomas and Terry Morris lined up behind Kevin Mason now. Will Walker is that number seven wide at the bottom of the picture there. Mason hands it to Malcolm Thomas, and he'll have a yard maybe. Now, let's go to John Saunders. 
Keith, the Rose Bowl pitcher is pretty muddled right now. USC and Washington State each still with a shot at it. Rob Johnson here to Keyshawn Johnson for the touchdown. They lead 7-3. Oregon also in the running, and they lead Arizona State 7 to nothing. Keith. Thought Washington was, State would have to win out in that Pac-10 because they beat Oregon. Thought it was snowing up there in Pullman. Yeah. That's just <laughs> Trying to scare the Cougars. This is Thomas. And he's out for the 33-yard line. So it'll be third down and about six. Thomas got away from Kenny Holmes to pick up that game. Third down, make it third down and four. Put the ball at the 33-yard line. Mason looking at his wristband there. Sometimes they just single in a number and then he just looks at the corresponding play next to that number. Makes it a little quicker. Out of the shotgun on third and four, throws it quickly, throws it sharply and completes it for a first down. The ball caught by Marvin Harrison. Mark it at the 44-yard line. Clemson beat North Carolina today in really? the ACC. A couple of shockers in the ACC, huh? I would think Syracuse confidence is growing. Lead Miami three to nothing with 5:40 to play in the first half. Option down the line. It is a good pitch to Thomas. He cuts it back into traffic and picks up uh, three yards on the play. Tomorrow on ABC Sports, three Eastern and two Central, the world's elite distance runners, along with thousands more, will be running in the mid -ap Big Apple for the 25th New York City Marathon. Not shown in the New York area. Then the deciding round of the Lincoln Mercury Kapalua International and Bob Gilder is leading 11 under. Robert, he gets over there in those islands. Oh, and he boy, always I plays love, well. I love just watching, just to see the views. Oh, he's, he's a long hitter from Oregon, gets over there in Hawaii and he's, he's tough. Kevin Mason got away from the pursuit. And actually got around the corner and put it on the Miami side of the field. Number 96, Kennard Lang, pursued him all the way across the field and just couldn't quite catch him. It's Rohan Marley, the uh, outside linebacker, hurt last week, hurt his knee, out for the season, hopes to be back for a bowl game. He tore the ligament, didn't he? The, uh, yeah, the medial collateral. And it's, no surgery was needed. Dardar is back in at tailback. Third down and three. It's it to Kirby, and he won't get the first down. Ray Lewis, 52, and there's one other hurricane over there that put the lick on him. It would be Richardson, number 19. Yeah. Even though the Hurricanes and Ray Lewis, number 52, have the speed to run sideline to sideline, this is what Syracuse does. This is what they are, and this is what they do best. They are not going to go away from their option, and it's kept them in the ball game. They've punted the ball. It's kept the ball away from Miami, and it's, it's working for them, and that's what De Leon said. We're going to do what we are. Three to nothing. Syracuse leading at four minutes to go in the first half. Reality to punt. German is deep. First kick by uh, Sean today was a 55-yarder into the end zone. clock expired so they'll back them up five at the second time they've burned it they burned it on the field goal but I thought that was on purpose this one I don't think was Paul Pasqualone Dennis Erickson 
Ascaloni, an Easterner out of Penn State. Dennis Erickson, a Westerner out of Montana State. Short of the 15, Jamie German's taken down at about the 13-yard line. 3.32 to go in the first half. The University of Miami has not had a starting point of a possession past their own 20-yard line in this entire first half. This one will be at the 12-yard line. Yep. It's not easy on the road, especially when you're on the road in a dome and it's very loud. James Stewart is the single back. Over the middle, ball is tipped. Look out, intercepted. Bevel has it. Bevel back to the 11-yard line. He's going to get in the lane and tip the ball. They've run this play before with some success. Play action, trying to hold him. This time, Conley sees it. Conley makes the play. Great field position for Syracuse. You know what they're trying to do when you've been around as long as Conley has. You know that play action fake. You know it's going to come right over your head. Nice play. Robinson fullback, Dardar tailback, eye formation. Wilson is wide left. The offensive line surge is quite good. Move that ball down to about the six yard line, so they pick up six on first down. Dardar carrying. Keith, the Hurricanes keep a chart on sudden change, meaning after a turnover, it's a challenge to their defense to go in and stop the other team from scoring. This is a severe test for them. They have done very well in that sudden change category. You got Thomas checking in as they go to the wishbone set. Give it to the fullback, Robinson. Nothing there for that. The middle guys just jumped all over him. At the conclusion of the ball game today, we'll have the Chevrolet most valuable players. It'll be the 24th season, or is the 24th season, that genuine Chevrolet players of the game have been chosen with each university receiving $1,000 for the general scholarship fund at the respective university. Syracuse needs seven. They, they should not be content with just three points here. Third down and four. I think they got the game on either contact or at least in the neutral zone. They needed third down and four if it's offside. Miami's arguing somebody moved along the offensive front. A defensive lineman jumped, and then an offensive lineman also jumped. Good ball. Approachman on the offense. So the offensive lineman responded uh, as the defender jumps across. You see it. See the miming man jumps, but he doesn't touch anybody, so he can get back. Then the offensive man jumps, and that's why it's on the offense. If the defensive man would have touched somebody, then it's offside. Then it's offside on the defense. Go back up Syracuse five and make it third down and nine as the ball comes back to the 11. And they're working out of the shotgun, so this leads pass. Oh. Hand the ball off to Robinson, the fullback. And he tries to slide between the guard and center and pop it where the linebackers weren't, and it didn't work. He had a few boos coming around, and again, it goes back to Syracuse. We're going to do what we are. We are not a passing team. Our offensive linemen going against the best pass-rushing team maybe in the nation. 
We're not going to get in that situation. Pasqualoni said, I'll settle for three. Mare hit a 35-yarder earlier in the quarter to make it 3-0. Yeah. That was down. Mason holding, drilled into the screen. Good. So it becomes 6-0 Syracuse at 58 seconds to play in the first half. Mare will kick it off. And here are your deep people. It's Shipman 32 and German 7. And coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders with scores and highlights and a conversation with Notre Dame's head coach, Lou Holtz, who's been deep in the magic potion, getting ready for Florida State down in Orlando. He's had an off week this week. He played Navy last week, and then he had a week open before that. He should be good and ready. High hanger, five-yard line. Shipman, look out. He gets some daylight. You just keep looking at his hip pocket, but they're able to get him at about the 22-yard line. Donovan Darris now he's to make the touch. Ball brought out from the five-yard line. Last few years we've been coming up here, Keith, Syracuse and Pasqualoni in particular have always had good special teams. They're showing it here this afternoon. Costa, as he comes up for the snap at center, is four out of nine, 48 yards, and he's been picked twice. Six to nothing, Syracuse, with 54 seconds remaining in the half. Out of the shotgun, Costa steps up, wants to go deep, and they suck him. Back at the 19. Wilkie Bazio from Spring Valley, New York, fought his way through to bring him down. Bazio, really, number 70 in the middle of your screen. If you're going to get a sack out of Syracuse, this is the man. Now, you're working in Simonette, number 66. Right there, he fights and twists. That's his eighth sack of the year. And we've got 45 seconds remaining in the half. Timeout. <laughs> All right, the Syracuse crowd coming up. Trying to help their defensive team. It's second down and 13 for Miami at their own 20. Custer's out of a shotgun with four wideouts. Going deep down the sidelines, and it is incomplete. Kevin Abrams covering Yatil Green on the play. Abrams is a tough kid, you know that? He is. Twice they've gone after the little guy. He's 5'9", right. 159. Norb, uh, Norm Gerber, the defensive coordinator, was telling me a little bit. He says, you know, we've been working. We know they're going to throw it up there for a jump ball, but we've been working on positioning. Our defensive backs trying to get position and time our jumps. And so far, so good. Third down and 13. Goes down the middle this time. Pass is caught by A.C. Tellison and has a first down. They'll give his mark near the 35. Cornhusker score 45 on the Jayhawks and win rather easily. Well, we did find out last week that you can roller skate in the Buffalo. <laughs> yes, we did, didn't we? <laughs> Costa takes off, nothing but green in front of it. Has a first down. And finally, Dan Conley gets a chance to put a pad on him and does. But he's got a big gain out of the play across midfield. The defense of Syracuse, the defensive backs has looked at uh, Conley. Looks like he may be uh, hurt a little bit. But the defense, a prevent. The three deep were 30 yards downfield, and the linebackers underneath were dropping off. Remember, Conley had arthroscopy, a tenth probe into the knees yeah. to repair some, smooth out some cartilage and remove scar tissue October 11, not very long ago. It's from the left side. There's Conley right there, 49. Doesn't, doesn't seem to be anything with the knees. May have just uh, dinged his head a little bit, maybe his neck. Now, it's knees. <laughs> 
has to come out. You got to love this. Taken for him. You got to love this kid. Sixth year, 10, 10 surgical procedures, two major, and only, I mean, only eight, eight arthroscopic He's surgeries. He's uh, interior design uh, yeah. major. Yes, he is. I told him if he ever wanted to run for Congress, call me. Guy with that kind of determination. Whew. The ball's at the 48-yard line. First down and 10, 19 seconds. And Custis throws the ball down. And you've got 15 seconds now. And you've got a moment for him to look to the sidelines and get a play. And the play will come in with number six, Trent Jones. You can't take their time because it's not a timeout. It's just a incomplete pass. Miami has one timeout. They're trying to save it for a completion inside and the inside of the field and a field goal attempt. They get some points. It would be a big boost for them at half. They've got trips at the bottom of your picture there. It's three receivers. Costas goes deep. And it is incomplete. And the man that he was looking for fell down. Yatil Green. He was covered by Bryce Bevel. They got tangled up, and there is no flag. This is the mismatch again. Green is 6'3 and a jumper. Bevel's 5'9. They're both looking back for the ball, and I think that is a good no call. Yep. I would agree. These corners know that they were going to try and throw those alley oop. They've tried it four times now, have not succeeded yet. Third and 10 from the Syracuse 48. Costas lets it fly, going for the end zone. No. This time, it is Rod Gatson, the nickelback, that makes the play. And the half is over. And Syracuse leads Miami at halftime, six to nothing. It seems Miami's offense the last couple of weeks, passing-wise, has depended too much on an alley-oop pass. And besides that, he appeared to be past the line of scrimmage when he threw it. But the half is over. The story, he was involved in both interceptions. Let me show you on the telestrator. The running play right here, but Conley is right here. Now watch the play action pass. They tried to get the ball to Stewart, faked it to him. Conley sees it. He tips the ball up in the air, and Bevel, the corner, is going to come back and make the interception. Conley was involved in the first interception. Actually, he involved, he actually did intercept the football, so. So it's the Miami offense that is sputtering. And let's see what happens. It's only six to nothing, however. So it's hardly a time for panic yet among the Canes. In the last 99 games, you see, the Syracuse Orange men have been pretty successful when they were leading at halftime. The thing that's happened is that the crowd is in this ball game. the thing we talked about uh, at the opening. Can't check off. Can't change things at the line of scrimmage with any degree of success. The ball is knocked into the end zone and will come out to the 20-yard line for Syracuse. Here's a look at the numbers in the first half. Uh, Syracuse rushing yards, 105. That's key because it keeps Miami off the field. 130 yards of total offense to 119. The two turnovers have stopped two of the Miami drives, both interceptions, and it led to three points for Syracuse. Miami has had the ball six possessions. Excuse me, Syracuse had it five times, and they scored on the third and fifth time, and they had a couple of pretty good drives of 10 and 12 plays. Great field position in the main. We had uh, offsides on the kickoff, so it uh, looks like they want them to come back and do it again. Miami, uh, the Miami offense uh, beleaguered somewhat, not only by the crowd and in the building, Bob, but by their own field position, which has been so poor. It has been poor. Their average starting position has been their own 18-yard line. Right here, and Syracuse has been the beneficiary of some good special teams play. Good coverage, good punting. They've started at their own 44. Buck 
Casolo is the special teams coach. And <laughs> he really gets into the ball game. Bounding up and down the sidelines, rooting them on. All right, they kick it from the 30. And it's a high hanger, caught at the 10-yard line by Kirby Dardar. And he can't get outside. They'd have been better off with making the ball out at the 20 as Earl Little comes line down the field to make the tackle. Now let's spend a moment with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, talking to the Syracuse sideline, the coaching staff at halftime, we're absolutely correct. During the breaks, they did change some of their offensive blocking schemes for the option in their inside play. They will continue to do the same thing. On the defensive side, Syracuse is trying to match up people for people, and that substitution that you talked about, Bob, is so important. Then, in those different packages, they're going to be extraordinarily aggressive trying to create the turnover. Keith? This is the worst starting point for Syracuse in the entire ballgame. It's back on the 13-yard line, where it's first and 10, and Dardar is the tailback and has the ball. Looks into the middle, and this time there is no daylight. None. Kennard Lang celebrating a little bit. Syracuse leaders of the first half. Mason only threw it five times for 25 yards. Dardar had 63 yards rushing, and not much passing for the, the Orangemen. Pat Riley, number 43, was very evident on that last play too he's been kind of contained he made the penetration that last time it's second down and 10. mason's got a major problem trying to outrun it and can't lane takes him out of bounds and he makes a second successive play and the syracuse offense is stalled with a goal line at his back Right over the center, that's going to be Riley, number 43. You hear so much about Sapp, but look at Riley. He's uh, 6'5 and about 293 pounds in the quickness. The option was supposed to go to the right side. There was no chance, and the flow and the speed of the defense catches up. This defense for Miami is trying to light a fire under the offense. Its own offense. Third down and about eight. Mason gets the ball off. The ball is thrown just as far as he can throw it, and it is incomplete. That is a... Now you get a penalty flag. The call goes against C.J. Richardson defending Marvin Harrison. That was close. The back judge didn't call it. He's in the center of the field. It was the side judge who is on the side of the field. Had a little bit better view of it. 15 yard penalty and a first down. To the left, there is the side judge. There's Richardson, 19. Yeah, I think he touched him a little bit. You know, Richardson never saw the ball, and I looked at the end, he finally knocked it down. But he did touch him before he knocks it down. When he put his arm across his chest there, that's yeah. what got it. Right, right there. there. Yeah. That's yeah. You can't do. Good call. It's a nice call. Yeah. And it's a proper call for the side judge and not the back judge because the back judge was blocked off. He yeah. couldn't see that. Moved the ball out to the 30. That's only the second uh, Miami penalty in the ball game. It's first down for Syracuse. Ball is handed off to Dardar. And uh, the Canes are kind of looking for Kirby here to start the second half of play. He had a good deal of success against them in the first half. Not so far in the second half. The three linebackers are Corwin Francis, Ray Lewis in the middle, and James Burgess on the outside. You see Pat Riley, 43, running around there. He is a defensive tackle. It's unusual you see a guy hunkered down on the defensive line wearing 43. He's right shoulder to shoulder with Warren Sapp. It tells you he played a different position and just grew into that number. Yep. That's <laughs> I mean, right. That side, that's double XL. At least. At least, is right. Kevin Mason pitches the ball off to Kirby Dardar, and it's good for about another five yards. That's good quick thinking and alertness on the part of Dardar to catch the ball. And a nice play by Mason to keep it alive. And on the defensive side, Lewis sees the man coming, the tackle, stops the second, knows he has the speed to catch up, and Mason tried to keep it alive. 
Third down and four for the Orange. They lead six to nothing over Miami. Here's your option to Gardar, and nothing cooking on this one, folks. Kenny Holmes was in the backfield and just simply waiting. Yep. Mason been better off to have kept the ball. Well, it's what it's what George Deleon said yesterday. He says we're we're going to do what we do best, and that's the option. If we look bad, we're still going to run it. We're going to try and make. But the outside option is not getting anywhere. It's the inside stuff that's been working, at least in the first half. Miami corrected and looked very good on that first possession, second half. It's a very simple matter of fact of life when you're playing against the Miami Hurricanes. East West won't get it. You're going to run it. You're going to run it north and south. Sean Reale is in the punt 55 and 46 on the first two today. Third quarter of play gets it out of there. Ball is fielded by German. And he's covered quite well by Syracuse. Back around the 32 yard line on a 42 yard punt. James Stewart, the single back. Frank Costa comes out at quarterback. Trips to the bottom, or the, as you look at it, the left side of the picture. And let's see if they pop it on the first one. They go underneath it. Pitch it off to Jonathan Harris. And they're in a melee on the sideline. Late hit and a flag, Keith. Not much room on the sideline. Personal foul that's against Syracuse. Here's a look at the first half possessions. Miami had it six times. They had two interceptions and turned it over on downs. On, But look at the field position, where they started. Nothing pretty about that stat. And are these Costa 5 of 14 and two interceptions. Stewart leads the rushers with eight for 33. Tellison. Two receptions, 23 yards. Defensive leaders, Conley, the middle linebacker, six tackles, one interception, and he caused an interception. Faster pitches to Stewart, out of hold. And picks up right at 10 yards on the carry. So good blocking going around that left corner that time. Miami has had some good plays, Keith. They haven't had any big plays, which Norv Gerber, the defensive coordinator, wanted to do, take away their big plays, and he wanted to stop their running game. He's, he stopped it pretty well, but he has, Miami is self-destructed. They move it for a while, then they stop themselves. Second and a short yard. Costa looks downfield, goes down the middle, and it is incomplete. It was intended for Gerard Daphnis and Tony Jones broke it up. Daphnis is on the left side of the screen. He's the tight end. He's going to come straight down the field. Collins is going to, I mean, uh, Costas is going to wait a little bit too long. The safety sees it and broke it up. That could have been picked off. There's a look at the Orange Men defense in the nation. Look at the bottom there. They're 86th in total defense. There's only 106 teams, but they're playing like uh, one of the best here today. There's Norm Gerber. He's with uh, Dick McPherson with the Patriots a couple years ago. First down, just inside the 40. Costa goes to Harris. And Huntley makes the tackle at about the 34-yard line. Tomorrow, an hour of America's Funniest Videos. Special guest Kenny Rogers, then the magical event of the season. Special hour with Siegfried and Roy, followed by the network premiere 
of the hand that rocks the cradle starring Rebecca De Mornay. Tomorrow night here on ABC. Much was made of Miami's average time for their 29 touchdown drives this season. About two and a half minutes. That has not been the case today. Six to nothing. Syracuse still leading with 10 minutes to go in the third quarter as Costa steps up and has time. Throws and again. He is lucky to get it back. And now you get a flag thrown by the back judge. He can see this play and he throws the flag. The pass intended for Green, defended by Abrams. It's pass interference. Let's go bottom right. It's got a slant pattern. Hard to tell. But kind of like basketball, yeah. though, Bobby. If you're behind him going over the top, you're going to get caught. And spe especially if you hit him before the ball gets there, obviously. <laughs> Here's what we're talking about. I think this is one of the reasons Miami is frustrated. 29 touchdown drives this year have taken an average of six plays, and in, 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 in the time of possession of those drives, only two and a half minutes. That's what Syracuse is doing. They're frustrating him. They're making him take their time. They're making him be patient. Seven penalties, 58 yards on the orange so far. Give the ball to Stewart, trying to get around the corner. Can't do it. And number 50, Antoine Pond. Got a little help from Kevin Abrams. And they take it out right about the line of scrimmage, which is just inside the 20. And when Miami gets inside the 20, which has been 24 times, They've scored 22 of those 24 times, 17 touchdowns. 92% of the time they score. That's pretty good. The crowd is listed at uh, 49.563. Sounds like more, doesn't it? Costa goes to the end zone again, and he misses. <laughs> intended for Chris T. Jones, who has caught 27 balls on the year. And it wasn't close. It's not all Costas' fault, fault either. The receivers uh, have to bear some of it. They're just not getting open. And part of it is the frustration of the defense they're going against. They like to score quickly. Miami does. They like the quick strike. You know they're known for that. They have not been able to do it. They're going against zones. Nobody's doing anything. They're just taking away big plays. Third and ten. Callison. First down, first and goal at the four. So he goes to the senior out of Bay City, Texas for the big play. He's over here in the slot, Keith. He's just going to go down and break to the inside. Watch the defenders as they're all just going to back up. They're not going to cover anybody man to man. They're just kind of play deep, play the quarterback's eyes. It's a nice job by Costa. Ball is on the four yard line, first down and goal. Stewart, a yard. Ryan Collins comes in sometimes in these situations for the Hurricanes. Ed Hobson made the tackle, the nose guard, number 94, from Roosevelt, New York. Ball is on the three. So There's look at Collins. Collins. He's uh, different skills, different skills. Better roll out. Nine plays, 65 yards. Time he spreads him out again. Stewart, touchdown, Miami. It's a nice drive for Miami coming out the beginning of the second half. Talked about some things, probably Dennis Erickson told him, listen, we're going to try to be patient and move it down. They put the receivers to our left, and they run it to our right with Stewart. He missed a couple of games because of a sprained ankle. Main foot for the extra point now. The holder is Mike Chrissy, the punter who tore a groin muscle. Tore it. He's out for the end of the season for that. 
Very good. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right to hold, though. Yeah. The extra point try is good. And the Miami Hurricanes with 8.44 to go in the third quarter have gone to the lead 7-6. CFA College Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet. The cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. And De Beers. A diamond is forever. Ten plays, 68 yards, and the lead for the Miami Hurricanes. And through it now will kick it off. Dardar and Jim Turner are back waiting for it for Syracuse. Talking about how well Miami's playing the optical Syracuse, they had a little help this week. On their scout team, number five, who's a wide receiver, was an option quarterback in high school, and he's got some very, very excellent speed. So all week long, he ran the option for the Hurricanes to get them ready for Syracuse. Looks like he got them in great position, Keith. All right, Swanee. Kirby Dardar is the man shaken up on the play and being attended to on the field. The returning kicks is a dangerous profession. But he's all right, he's winning. 42 to the right side of the screen, that's Dardar. Oh, look out. Yeah, you hate to see that, but he's up and walking around, but that was close. It's okay. So put the ball on the 32-yard line for the Orange now, and let's see how they respond to losing the lead after holding it for more than a half. About two and a half quarters, they had the lead. Malcolm Thomas will be your tailback. Edmund Robinson is the fullback. Kevin Mason holds the trigger. Wants the throw, goes short. Pass is intercepted. Intercepted by number nine, Chad Wilson, who stepped in front of Marvin Harrison. This is the first time that Syracuse has gone outside their personality. We mentioned they're an option team, and that's what they run. Drop back pass right here, first down. They throw an out pattern to the left side. And Chad Wilson picks off his second pass of the year. Syracuse people on the sidelines were hollering he didn't make a clean catch. It's catch and they're right. He did not catch that ball. He did not catch that ball. It hit the ground. Well, they own it. First down at the 46. James Stewart is the single back. And he takes it across the 40. Seven yards on the carry. Let's go back and take one more look. Good protection. This ball is going to go right through his arms. Right there on the ground. The official right there, look at the official. Couldn't see it because he was blocked off by the receiver for Syracuse. You got another uh, Syracuse man hurt. It's Antoine Pons who came into the ball game, a, a redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville, dinged up. And you've got a timeout taken right now for Antoine. Antoine Pond was helped off the field. Kevin Mason was on the sidelines after having been intercepted. Miami has the football, second down and four. It's just inside the Syracuse 40. Field position in the second half, opposite of what it was in the first half. Costa, ball is tipped. Ball is tipped. That is not a lateral. That's an incomplete forward pass. Scott Freeney was the defensive uh, lineman or outside linebacker that got his hands on it for Syracuse. 
Oh, it was not a lateral pass. No, Some it, people seem to think it was, but it wasn't. But it's, 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 it's poor timing. It's a poor play because if you're going to throw that, you have to have a lineman getting on the defensive end, Freeney, uh, otherwise and, and, he steps get, in and, and get his hand up. Watch this. If you're going to throw this ball, you got to get the man's hands down. 77 is sitting back. you got to fire out. That's Lomelski. you got to get his hands down, or else you're going to get the ball knocked up in the air and it's going to get picked off. That's poor coordination. Ferguson is the single back. Blitz from the corner. Ferguson inside. Close to the first down. Number nine, Rod Gadsden, a nickelback, was blitzing from the outside and got there a little late. And they'll bring the chains off. Gadsden, number nine, and Jamie German, number seven, for the Hurricanes, went to uh, Fort Lauderdale High School. Not Fort Lauderdale, Fort Myers High School together. German was the wide receiver, and uh, Gadsden was the quarterback. They called each other, talked to each other each week, and they had some... Good conversations this week talking about this one. Just short. And it is fourth and about a foot. Here comes Derek Harris, an extra tight end. Here comes Saeed Tucker, another tight end. Ty was a starter a year ago. Got hurt. Daphnis won the job. You got James Stewart in, so all the big guys are out there yep. going fourth and a foot. This is the elephant team right here. Costa keeps it, and he's got the first down. Put the ball at the 35, first down for the Canes. They lead 7 to 6 with 7.23 to play in the third quarter. Keith, in the Pac-10, USC and Washington State. Rob Johnson hooks up once again with Keyshawn Johnson. They missed the point after 13-3. Trojans with the lead. And Oregon against Arizona State, leading it by 10 at halftime. Keith. Thank you, sir. Six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Miami trying to build a lead here now. They lead by one point. Go to Stewart. Pops it over that. He's free. Touchdown, Hurricane. Twenty-seven yard touchdown run by James Stewart. He, he's got the speed. He's six three and two thirty-five. Terrell Green, number fifty-one, is going to pull and get a block on Abrams. He's got four three speed with all that size and weight. 16 carries, 90 yards, and two touchdowns for Stewart. Not a good idea to be doing finger pointing, however, when you go to the next level, somebody will take it home with them. The extra point try is good. And the Miami Hurricanes here in the third quarter have bounced back now to take a 14 to six lead over the Syracuse Orange men. An interception, a turnover, put the ball on the Syracuse end of the field, and the cane stuck it in the end zone on a 27-yard run. And next Saturday, starting at 12 noon Eastern time, Notre Dame and Florida State out of Orlando. Then the second games about the country will include these. Penn State at Illinois, Alabama and Mississippi State, Baylor and Rice, Arizona and USC. Arizona USC another very big ball game in the Pac-10 Rose Bowl chase. Yep. Let's go back 
and take a look at the, well, one of the biggest plays on that last drive for Miami. It got it started. The interception by Chad Wilson that really wasn't. Watch the ball hit the ground right there. But you know, Keith, you go through a game or a season, you're going to get some good calls and bad calls. You have to overcome yep. the bad ones. It balances out. Yeah, it does. Turner at the center. Almost lost the ball. Yep. Haynes arguing. They got it. But the referee. Oh, you go. Once again, you're Glenn. Now, Keith, linebacker Antoine Pound for Syracuse was on the sideline. It took most of the time on the sideline just to take off the tape and the knee brace to get to his knee to check it out. Once they did, they determined he was okay. They took him into the locker room to retape it, but he is literally taped from his ankles, the bottom of his feet, all the way up to beyond his knee to protect that right knee, Keith. Mm, sure. Tough business. Malcolm Thomas is the tailback now behind Robinson. Option down the line. Mason kept it and turned it all the way to the 39-yard line. See, now they're back to what they do best. And Mason hurt. Larry Tiger, a redshirt freshman, is listed behind him at quarterback. Keith Downing is uh, listed number three, yeah. but it's Downing up popped up. Yeah, they said either one of them could go in. Yeah. It's the problem with the option offense is the quarterback takes a lot of hits. So it'll be Downing coming in. Take a look at the option. Fullback gets a block. There's a huge hole there. Yeah, he's getting hit low, high, in the air. Don't ever oh, go in the yeah. air. No, <laughs> it's 54 that does oh. most of the damage, though. James Burgess should squeeze the air out of him when he drove him into the ground. He's a good kid, though. He didn't whine. He waited his turn. Uh, he learned from Marvin Graves. Some people around here think that he's got a stronger arm and that he's faster and run the option better. They think he's he's better than Marvin. He just hasn't had the opportunity to play as much. All right, Keith Downing is into the ball game. 6'3", 196. He's a redshirt freshman out of Fairport, New York. I think you'll see uh, Mason back shortly, but Downing's out there right now with the first down at the 39-yard line. Miami leading 14 to 6. Handed off to Mountain Thomas. And again, there is good offensive line work by Syracuse for a pickup of six yards. And here comes Mason back. Mason came into the game with, with a string of uh, 77 straight completions without an interception. That goes back three games. Very efficient passer. Twenty-five second clock shows zero. Ball start. Ball start is the Offense. call, however. Paul Pasqualoni. If there is anything I would like to see, I'd like to see him smile. <laughs> he is so intense. My goodness. He loves his job, though, doesn't he? Yes, he's a single man who works till 10 o'clock most every night. It's his eighth year at Syracuse, his fourth as a head coach. Second time for the Orange. Make it second down and 10 now as the ball comes back just inside the 40. No place to go. Warren Sapp 
Kennard Lang, 76 and 96. Syracuse offensively, Keith, has scored only 17 points against Miami's defense in the last three games they've played. And Miami, as we mentioned earlier, has not given up a touchdown on the road or to a Big East opponent this year. So if Syracuse is going to come back, they're going to have to break some, uh, some strings. Third and 17. Ball is flopping around. It's incomplete forward pass. He was trying to throw it as he was going down, and it was knocked out of there. So it is an incomplete forward pass. And they will put Watch the bottom of your screen, number uh, 96 is Lang. He's going to be the being a beneficiary of the double team on SAP number 76. Lang leads the team with eight sacks, but one of the reasons is because all of the attention that Warren Sapp gets to gets right next to him. Sean Reale is in the punt. Jamie German is waiting for it at the 25. And a retreat a bit. 21. Penalty flags all over the place. Jim Turner was shoved in the back. Miami. And the two players involved are smiling about it. They knew he was waiting for him to turn, and he just didn't turn. So the penalty goes against Miami, and we go to 20. Well, Keith, we're talking about the Miami offense so much of the time, and they've got a great defense. Take a look at the teams in the past that have won national championships and look to see where they are in scoring offense, but more importantly, look at the scoring defense. Obviously, if you can't score, you got a better chance to win these ball games. and the defense of Miami has been the foundation for those national championships, and they're looking pretty good this afternoon. They, they are. Well, that's so true, Lenny. Everybody remembers the uh, Cozars and the Testa Verdes and the Walshers of Miami, but that defense was the one that always set the tone. Ball the is on the 12-yard line, and it's Larry Jones picking his way up to the 21. He got nine yards on a carry that was detoured momentarily, but regenerated by his own personal strength. And that defense, Keith, of Miami has had to kind of uh, hold up or bolster the offense because as we've seen here in the first half with Miami, they've taken a while to get going. They've done that before this season. It takes them a while to get going. They've been inconsistent. They miss, but the defense has always been there. Costa gives it to Jones, and he's got a first down at about the 28-yard line. Now they get a little room behind them. They're beginning to take control of the line of scrimmage. And, and one of the reasons is they're running the ball up the middle. Since the injury to Antoine Pons, uh, that is the third linebacker that, that Syracuse has lost in the middle this year. They lost Nate Hemsley early in the year, and Greg Shaw also. Pons is the third inside linebacker that uh, has gone out with an injury. 2.45 in uh, the third quarter. There he comes. He's coming back. Jones drilled down about the line of scrimmage. 83. Chris Marks got there first. Junior from Everett, Massachusetts. In this quarter, with 2.20 to go, Miami has picked up 103 yards. And Syracuse just 15. It's second and nine for Miami. Antoine Pound is back. Take a look at uh, wonder who got fired up at halftime and who didn't. Um, Erickson got him going. Two possessions, two touchdowns. Costa out of the shotgun, goes down the middle. Tallison is there for the catch. He's having a good day near the 45 and another. Miami first down, and here's John. Keith in the Pac-10, Arizona State trying to keep Oregon out of the Rose Bowl, but Danny O'Neill goes 15 yards to Kristen McLemore. 20-3 is the lead for the Ducks. In the whack, 
Utah had a big lead over New Mexico, but it's only one now, 21-20, Keith. The Ducks are for real, huh? Yeah, we'll see. Four catches and 53 yards for A.C. Tellison. Wait a minute, they beat Washington and they beat uh, Arizona. <laughs> yeah. The only problem you've got with Oregon is a very thin team. One injury, one injury could just absolutely yeah. disrupt the whole yeah. thing for them. Yeah. This is uh, Green, Yatil Green, making the catch. So look at the... Bow Coalition top 25. Everybody's doing all right or playing later. Of course, Syracuse is losing here. Washington State is losing. Southern Cal. North Carolina lost. Second down and three. This is Larry Jones and another Miami first down. And now I think you can clearly see that the Miami offensive line is taking control of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and they're running inside. The thing about Oregon, and I'm nobody in the world could be happier for Rich Brooks than I am because uh, they've had some hard times, and uh, Rich gave up the AD's job and all of that to go back to coaching. But uh, they've got three losses. And, uh, but the ones in the conference are the ones that come. Right. Jones again. That's about the 34. 20 yard line. Uh, excuse me, the uh, 34 yard line. When uh, Miami came out to start the third quarter, you had a sense that they're. Uh, they were jacked up. Well, and, and I think the defense was on the field first yep. for Miami, yep. and they set the tone. They were jacked up. They came out and stopped Syracuse, and the offense is like the little brother of the of the defense. So we've got a quarter to go. Miami leads at 14 to 6. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC station. time really for Syracuse because Miami has the mole they're moving the ball they own the line of scrimmage in the third quarter now it's time for the orange men if they're to have a chance to dig as deep as they can on second down and six Larry Jones takes it to the 30. He's a couple of yards short of the first down. Here's a look at the third quarter numbers. Miami is starting to take over. The two uh, turnovers on the Syracuse side, that one led to a touchdown, and the 153 yards rushing for Miami. When they rush for 150 yards, they've won 41 games in a row. They're using uh, Jones and Stewart now just to beat on them. Syracuse is all messed up. They've got the wrong people in the ball game. They're substituting five at a time, and that time it did not work out. They lose a timeout. With their sights set on the Big Ten title, Penn State takes on rival Illinois. For other key conference games, cap off a college football doubleheader next Saturday on ABC. you can see from those, a lot of those people are the Miami folks there, the small contingent here. But uh, they're pretty happy. Third down conversions for the Canes today. Five out of ten. 14-27 to go in a game. Pinned to the Stewart. And on third down and two, he turns the corner for the first down. Something's been happening up in Pullman. Let's hear about it from John. Well, Keith, your alma mater's getting it going here. Washington State against USC, and Chad Davis drops back, lost the pass right into the arms of Eric Moore, and they have their first touchdown within a field goal now, Keith. Pretty good little ball game. I wonder if uh, Brent and Dick went up to see my alumni center. Did, did they name it after Turian? Yes. <laughs> James Stewart. Big back, big strong back, just a hammer. Scott, uh, he's bigger. 
than Lawrence Phillips. In fact, Stewart, I guess, may be about the biggest uh, of, of the oh, running backs about the country. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, there really may be a never. bigger one, but... But not with his success not in with, notoriety. Not with his speed. Yeah. Rutgers is showing some signs of getting a program that's going to produce some wins. State University of New Jersey. All you got to do is keep 10% of the New Jersey kids at home. A lot of football players in the state Ooh, of New Jersey. Yes. Second down and eight. From the 25 for Miami. Costa pumps it. And he's down to about the 16. That'll be a first down. I would think that Bill Curry's probably had about enough of life in Lexington. Things have not gone well there this year. And that business a little earlier with his family was yeah, uh, that's really nasty stuff. Really uh, distasteful. 17 yard line, first down, Miami. He had Kevin Abrams hanging on him, and he had the strength to go ahead and pick up a couple of yards, and you got a Miami man down on the field. Auburn winning again today, Mississippi State winning today, and they've got Alabama coming in next week, and the Tide's down at LSU tonight. It is Ricky Perry who is hurt. Ricky Perry is a 329-pound junior offensive tackle. And he's in pain. Injured players number 73, Ricky Perry. Tomorrow on ABC Sports, 3 Eastern, the elite distance runners of the world will be involved in the 25th running of the New York City Marathon, which will not be shown in the New York area, at least our coverage. Will. Then live from Hawaii at 4 Eastern, 3 Central and Pacific, the final round of the Lincoln Mercury Kapalua International. All tomorrow here on ABC Sports. Remind you again now, the New York City Marathon will not be shown in the New York area. Robert Woodis would be the man to replace Ricky Perry. He's hurting some. Has to leave the game when the timeout is called, and he's got leg trouble. Kansas State remem remains a, a, a prominent contender for a rather good bowl game. Oklahoma winning today. Colorado didn't score a whole lot of points, but they got the win. If they're having trouble getting Ricky off the field, uh, they're going to need some players and not uh, student yeah. managers to get him off. 329 pounds yeah. of him. 20. Hello, Keith. Dan Conley is also on the bench for Syracuse. He's got an ice pack on that on that bad knee of his. It is just sore. It's not injured, but it's a good picture of what this young man has been going through throughout his career. He gets into a ball game. He gives you 100 percent everything he has. But when he can't take any more of the pain, when it's too sore, he comes off to the sideline, tries to ice it down to get something back so he can go back in the ball game. Keith. OK, 20. This is a big loss for Miami, though, if he's hurt. Yeah, he was uh, one of their top two offensive yep. linemen. And you have to kind of think down the road. Miami still got Boston College coming down there. Yeah. At the end of the season. That won't be a, gi a gimme. And then, of course, uh, everybody's talking about Miami, Nebraska, possibly in the Orange Bowl. It is second down and seven. James Stewart, the single back. The ball is on the Syracuse 14-yard line. Stewart goes in behind the fresh legs on the right side. Robert Woodis and gets a couple of yards out of it. Let's update you now on what's happening with the Ohio State Buckeyes and Wisconsin. Well, Wisconsin beat Michigan earlier, but they are having the problems with Ohio State. Bobby Hoying to Chris Sanders, 16 yards. Second time these two have hooked up today. Eddie George just ran one in, 24 to 3. 
And look at the standings in the Big Ten. Remember, the number two team goes to the Citrus Bowl. Keith. Thank you, John. Stewart now has 100 yards on 20 carries. Shotgun, third down and six. Costa gets rid of it in a hurry. Green, touchdown, Miami. Yeah, Teal Green is a red shirt freshman from Lake City, Florida, 6'3, 193 pounds. Get used to the name. He'll be around the while. This is the wide receiver screen. Watch the lineman will block and then come downfield to block the uh, linebackers. The throw is high. Green makes a nice catch of it and runs it in for the touchdown. Comes at 11:39 to play in the ball game. They had the ball for 14 plays to go 88 yards, and Pruitt makes it. No, he did not make it. 20 to six. Pruitt is wide right. There is something about place kickers in Florida and wide right. <laughs> I've heard that before. FSU. CFA College Football on ABC Sports brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Bayer for the relief of tough body and joint pain. You get older, you get smarter. You get Bayer. And quality care service at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers. That extra point Dane Pruitt just missed was number five this year. Dardar and Turner waiting for Pruitt's kick. Going toward Turner. Yard deep. Good little move to get him across the 20 and a penalty flag. Probably got a push in the back, I do believe. Yep, that's exactly it. It's against Syracuse. And let's spend a moment with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, I'm on the Miami bench standing behind Ricky Perry, number 73, the offensive lineman that came off. Uh, he is not coming back in the ball game. They believe it is just a sprain on his left foot. But he had surgery on that foot in January, so they're going to keep him out of the ball game, take him in, have him x-rayed as a precaution, and not let him go back into the ball game. Keith? Yes, sir. This will be the worst starting point for Syracuse all day. They're on eight-yard line. 11.33 to play in the game, and they'll go with Dardar and Willis in the backfield. Harrison? Is the wide out close to the camera there. They run it, and Kirby Dardar, who's quite an explosive slashing runner, gets it out across the 15, out to the 18-yard line. That's very close to a first down. It is a first down. I want to thank the Syracuse marching band. They had delivered a sweatshirt. They heard that I had uh, some luggage missing. I found the luggage. It was delivered promptly, but I've got the sweatshirt and I'm going to keep it. Should I ask uh, what airline you were flying? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Penalty flags all over the place. It was handled well. Face mask against Miami. I merely wanted to thank the marching band. Here's a look at the uh, the game in yards. First half, uh, Syracuse won the battle, and in the second half, it's been all Miami. Defeat is heavy. Malcolm Thomas in the backfield now with Dardar and Willis. Mason keeping. He ducked under. One potential collision. 
and picked up a first down. Well, this is the way that Syracuse has to do it. They can't drop back and just throw pocket passes. Not only, not because their quarterback can't throw, but because their offensive line can't pass protect that way. They need the option, they need the threat of the run, and they can throw that way. So put the first down at the 31-yard line with uh, Mason now, uh, three out of seven, 25 yards, interception, and he's run for 40 yards on 11 carries. This is Dardar. He's got a couple. And if time permits, we invite you to stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post-game report with scores and highlights from about the country. Almost 70 degrees today, or might have even gone past that since we came to the ballpark. Incredible streak of weather lately here in the Syracuse area, which annually is one of the early snowfall places. This year, timeout called by Syracuse. 9:42 to play in the game, and Miami leading 20 to six. A 20 to six ball game. You see the time remaining at 9:42. Southern California Trojans have scored again against Washington State and uh, increased their lead to 20 to 10 in the fourth quarter of play. Rob Johnson has always had big ball game against Cougars. Played well up there, hadn't he? Yeah, against the Cougars. <laughs> yes. You know, that happens. Sometimes, I don't know why, maybe just the colors of the other team. You like, you feel comfortable playing against another team. On second and seven from the 34. It is Malcolm Thomas. Finally pushed out of bounds. There's a penalty flag back at the 40-yard line. Holding Syracuse. It'll come back. Here's John Saunders. Keith, you just mentioned the score, and here it is. Rob Johnson again for the third time today. He hits Keyshawn Johnson, who fights his way out of a tackle. And then it's a foot race. A nice cut right there for the touchdown. His third of the day, 65 yards. And right now it's 20 to 10. Oregon still leading Arizona State. If those scores hold up, Oregon gets the Rose Bowl if they win the rest of their games. Keith. And I expect they very well might. Though funny things happen in the Willamette Valley when Oregon and Oregon State get together. Uh huh. Oregon State's the wishbone team in the Pac 10. Syracuse penalties, they have 10 for 83 yards. But, you know, one of the things that wanders through my mind, Bob, talking about Oregon going to the Rose Bowl, is how much fun it would be to see the face of my old friend Lynn Casanova as his beloved Oregon team goes back uh -huh. to the Rose Bowl. Uh -huh. That would be pure joy. Now well into his 80s. Great move by Mason. You better throw it, son. And he can't find anybody to throw it to. There's a considerable loss on the play. Holmes and Sapp and everybody was all over the field. Sapp finally pushed him out of bounds, slapped him on the head. He was a tight end. Sapp was a tight end when he first got to the University of Miami, and he had such good footwork and size. He's now 280 and 6'3 that he outgrew the tight end position. But uh, he's from a small town in Florida, Plymouth, Florida. He was raised by a single parent, his mother, one of six children. She, uh, he says she dished out a lot of love, a lot of food, and a lot of discipline. He says, my mom is my world. And uh, when he goes into the NFL, he's going to take care of his mom. He's got a man. It's Wilson. And it is intercepted. And then not held. Number 12, Carlos Jones was going man mano mano against uh, Sermon Wilson seemed to have the interception and as they came down he couldn't hold it left side of your screen it's a nice play by Carlos Jones to make a play on the ball he had it there didn't he huh. yeah it did uh, Wilson did a nice job to uh, yes, knock it, it loose yep. yep 
Here comes the punt from Sean Reale. it left the Lombardi finalists he'd be a defensive Heisman trophy candidate for sure there's the lady he was talking about who raised him and said boy she said he said if you did anything wrong at school or down the road or anywhere she knew it before you got home <laughs> and there'd be hell to pay. <laughs> Second half possessions for Miami. They got it straightened out at halftime, didn't they? Yes, they did. Danielle Ferguson, the single back from the 46-yard line, first down. Ferguson is in there for about nine yards and we go inside nine minutes now at 8.59, 20 to 6 Miami. Danielle Ferguson played with your youngest, didn't he, Brian? Yes, he did at Columbus High School in Miami. He was, uh, in fact, he set the uh, county rushing record for uh, Dade County in Miami. Wanted to stay home and uh, play with the university and brings a little bit different dimension to the Hurricanes. He's got, he's got speed and toughness and is a slashing type of runner. Three wideouts now, the bottom of your picture. Back to Ferguson. On second down and one, easily has the first down as he runs it down to the Syracuse 38-37 yard line. Clearly, the Canes are in control now. Yeah. Syracuse just wore down. They just wore them out. Yeah, let's throw some bouquets to that offensive line. Watch as they're going to be blocking. And there's going to be a huge hole right up in here where Ferguson is going to run the football. Straight blocking, nothing fancy. 66 is Seminette. Jones is the center. Green 51 is doing a stellar job. It's the offensive line that's carried the load for Miami. Number 40 steps into the fray. George Myers, a sophomore from Bayonne, New Jersey, for that tackle. And when you look in underneath all of that uh, armor, Lord, did they look young, don't they? Oh, don't they? <laughs> mm. I mean, just because they're wearing a helmet and pads and they look ferocious and fearful, you have to remember that they're 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kids that are going to school and only practicing football for 20 hours a week. And they're entitled to make some mistakes. Got something out of it. About five yards. Costa is one of those guys that's known some adversity. A tough year last year. He was benched in '93. They had high expectations. He, a lot of criticisms. Uh, in fact, he said uh, he got a call from Bernie Kozar, who was one of the ex quarterbacks for the university. And Bernie of the Cleveland Browns last year said, Hey, he says, uh, Keep your spirits up. Says, not, nothing's happening to you that hasn't happened to all the rest of us. It goes with the territory. He said it really meant a lot for Bernie to give him a call. Third down and four. Ferguson. He's close. Didn't get it, though. Costa in today's ball game is 10 of 22 for 118 yards and a touchdown. And uh, that's short. And, and the, probably the main problem that Costa has, Keith, are the comparisons that they keep throwing up. They keep remembering the, the Testaverdes and the, uh, the uh, Jim Kellys and the uh, Toretta's and the Steve Walsh's and the Kozars. And they, he is not that type of player. He cannot carry this team by himself. Gets the first down. And it's, and it's not his down. fault for that. It's just the type of player he is. Those players were a lot better and had a lot more talent than Costa. And here's, 
And here's what's going for the Hurricanes right here. And this is why the Hurricanes have been successful. 202 yards on 43 rushes. That's over five yards per rush, or close to it. And that's very good. From the 27 now, the pitch to Daniel Ferguson. And he is shoved out of bounds by Daryl Parker, the strong safety. We'll start next Saturday at 12 noon Eastern time from Orlando, the Citrus Bowl, Florida State's home game. The Notre Dame and coming to town. Florida State's the one that's going to be all jacked up to turn things around after that tough close loss last year. You heard Lou Holtz at halftime talking about that. Thing that makes it doubly dangerous, so he's had an extra week to get into his thing, and he's pretty good at it. Penn State, Illinois is a very important ball game. Alabama, Mississippi State, very important ball game. A lot of stuff going on these days in college football. 5.56, Ferguson again. Down to the 16-yard line. That'll be another first down. At the 17-yard line. You want to check around next week and uh, call your local cable operator to see which of the pay-per-view games are available on cable and which game is being shown in your area, particularly in the second half of our doubleheader. You could have quite a banquet. Uh huh. This is the ninth play in this possession. Stewart has scored three touchdowns today. Ferguson's in there doing the heavy work right now, and he makes it first and goal to go from the three-yard line. Well, there's no question that this offensive line is dominating now. The control of the line of scrimmage, 51 is Green, 63 is Jones. Simonette is 66, who just clears that gaping hole Alan Simonette, number 66. Amelski on the left side. That's the difference in this offense this year and in the past. This offensive line, who have been young the last couple of years, have really come of age. And Greg Smith, the offensive uh, line coach and assistant head coach, needs to get the credit. Miami has taken a timeout with an even five minutes to play in the game. Put the ball on the three-yard line, first and goal to go for Miami. In the first half, the Canes had 56 yards. In the second half, they've had 170. <laughs> Trying to get him to go in motion. <laughs> He turns and gives the ball to Derek Harris, who is listed basically as a tight end, 5'11", 250 pounds, a junior out of Willow Ridge, Texas. He's been in several times today as a tight end, primarily as a blocker, but he has been a running back and a block of a fullback, if you will. So they tried him, and he got a yard. But he was, uh, Costa was stomping his foot trying to get Ferguson to go to He didn't have an itch or he wasn't, uh, <laughs> he didn't hear some music uh, down at that end. It was, he wanted the tailback to go in motion. All right, let's see what happens with Ferguson here. Now. He's got it. He's in traffic. He's got a penalty flag thrown in his direction. See what that's all about. Second down. First man. 
Eric Harris got in there. Touchdown. So they run that 250 pounder out of the fullback position and he sticks it in the end zone. And the thump you heard was the door slamming. He's warmed out and really asserted themselves with the running game in the second half. Syracuse, in case you know, some of you might not know, but it, only Boston College is smallest in the Big East than Syracuse. The enrollment here is 10,200. Pruitt's extra point this time is good. And Syracuse must go far to recruit their They have 16 states represented on their roster as they came to the ballpark today. And the reason for that is there's just not that much population around here. There are only nine double-A high school teams in the immediate region. And the coach said yesterday two of those probably should not be ranked double-A. But they have run a lot of people through this organization over the years and 104 years of college football. Names that uh, you can't help but recognize. I mean, how about that? Zonka and Little and Monk and Morris and Daryl Johnson. Who's a great player right now for the Dallas Cowboys? Some pretty good running backs in oh, that group, aren't goodness. there? Oh my goodness, Brown, yeah. Davis, Ernie Davis, wonderful player. John Mackey. Uh huh. There have been a lot of them come through here. Saw Joe Morris. Uh, he's here for the game uh, today, by the way. He? These are just some of the great players that have come through here through the years. Utah is losing to New Mexico. And the USC has uh, kicked the field goal for a 13-point lead, and that's got to be getting pretty late in the ball game now. So I think that one is decided. And uh, they'll be uh, glancing out of the corner of their eye and looking for a party tonight in Eugene, Oregon, probably. 35-yard line, Pruitt hits it, going toward the corner. Jim Turner waiting on it a yard deep in the end zone. He's going to stay there. So they'll bring it out to the 20, where it'll be first down for Syracuse with three minutes and 49 seconds to play in the ball game, and you get a flag thrown at the 10-yard line. Some frustration starting to show up now, but this is a personal foul call against Miami. And that's a bit silly, actually, because you're in control of things now at 27 to 6, and time running out, and you get a personal foul on a play where the ball is already dead. Well, here's a look at uh, Miami winning at Syracuse today. They have Pittsburgh uh, at home, and then they go to Temple, and then their last game, Boston College at home, and I would think that would, might be their toughest assignment before. If they win those three, I would think that the chances of them going to the Orange Bowl are pretty good. Yep. And playing Nebraska. Yep. You know, the, the uh, Big East uh, Conference is a turf conference. There's only one grass field. Gain is nine yards, pass caught by Marvin Harrison. Boston, uh, or rather, uh, Syracuse has played on grass one time this year. That was done in East Carolina. Mm -hmm. Miami, of course, being the only team that plays on grass in the Big East. Second down and one. And the folks are now beginning to head home and start the paper. Kirby Dardar runs into midfield and just across. Utah defeated today by New Mexico. New Mexico is a team that's kind of played in tough luck this year. Pretty good little football team. And they got a big one today in beating Utah. It's a huge fall for the first time. You know, Keith, you mentioned Oregon. Uh, they have two games left. They control their own destiny. They have, they're at, at Stanford, and they are at Oregon State, as you mentioned. And that's, uh, that's like a backyard brawl right there. Malcolm Thomas. And this is the youngster right here that some people think has the potential to grow into a Joe Morris type of running back. And he right now, as a young sophomore, is 5'8", 196 pounds. He is from uh, Jacksonville, Florida, and was thinking about going to Georgia Southern. 
changed his mind and came on up here. That 125, incidentally, on the sleeve of the Syracuse players is 125th year. Syracuse, uh, Syracuse uh, played well for a half, and then they just wore down. Just gave out. Yep. Oh, pretty good block right there. Another good block to keep the quarterback over. And he dances on down the sidelines and gets inside the 20-yard line. Key block that time came from Melvin Tootin, number 74, who <laughs> came over and took out two. He took him out. He's yeah. six, seven, and three hundred. And did he take him out? I walked up to him yesterday and uh, just kind of leaned on him, and like leaning on a tree. <laughs> I mean, he is a big man. Uh -huh. First down at the Miami 19, but the issue is no longer in doubt. Two and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Twenty-seven to six, Kings. This is Thomas running in the middle. Dennis Adonis Scott, number 25, had a pretty good lick on uh, on the Syracuse running back Thomas that time. Uh -huh. He's going to, I think, maybe have, well, the referee's talking to him now. And he's saying, you know, control yourself. Don't want to throw a flag. Miami has their second team defense in there, but they don't want to give up a touchdown. Got that string against Big East teams. Yeah, but you've got a second team in there that's fresh yep. late in the ball game. Here's the pitch. And Thomas to the 10, thereabouts. Make it the 11. And a minute and 40, the clock is running. You know, got some joy going out there now. There's no reason for that. Just going back to the huddle and play. Here's a look at McMacken, the defensive coordinator. This year, for the first time, Tommy Tuberville last year left. Went on to, uh, I think he went to Texas A&M. Sonny Lubick was there uh, a few years ago. The, the point is that uh, Miami changes coordinators, but the defense continues at a high level because of the athletes, the style of play they they use, and uh, they didn't change the system when when uh, Erickson came in. Well, Tootin finally broke. He was hunkered down so long, he was probably getting cramps. <laughs> you quarterbacks don't understand that. You get up there and you start singing songs and changing <laughs> counts and changing plays, yeah. and it's hard when what? you're a big old fella to hunker down there that long. Yeah, but you do it in practice, you know, <laughs> intentionally. Just you're, you're, you're training and you're teaching in these guys, and you're just preparing them for the games. You do it in practice. You don't do anything in the game that you don't do in practice. Well, it's tired. He's been working hard. Yeah. Here we go. Back at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, we have 32 seconds remaining in a ball game that has been decided for some time with Miami leading Syracuse by a score of 27 to 6. It's always kind of wearing to... Uh, to hear something like the former president's problem there. But yeah. He's had I think a special back, kind of life. Yeah, I think back to my meeting with him uh, when we were uh, Purdue's only uh, visit to the Rose Bowl. We were at uh, Disneyland out there, and the, he was governor at the yeah. time. And he came out and visited with both teams. Uh, very delightful man. Kevin Mason. In a hurry. He's agile. Look at this. Look out. Got a chance. Down to the six-yard line. Great effort. You talk Great about, effort. yes, talk about some, some grit. He took everybody. He took about uh, 16 of the 22 players on the field for a little run right here. Now, he's got, he's got about 10 of them chasing him, and the rest of them are going to follow both teams. Now he's going to cross field. This is a quarterback, folks. This is not, not a running back. He's still up. And they finally pull him down at the 11-yard line, and the game is over. So the Miami Hurricanes come north 
and they win again by a score of 27 to 6. The genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are the Miami's Casey Jones, the center, and we we name him because the offensive line of Miami just absolutely took control in the second half of play. And number 49 for Syracuse right there. Ann Conley, the, the linebacker whose knees have been operated on 10 times. He had 13 tackles, one interception, and broke up a pass. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund, rewarding outstanding students for academic achievements and to help those in financial need. Now here is Lynn Swan. Coach, I'm with Dennis Erickson. Coach, congratulations on the big win. You control your destiny in the Big East. They presented you with a number of problems, though, in the first half. Well, yeah, they played extremely well. They played with tremendous emotion and uh, just played well. We were very lucky to, to be in the game. We came out in the second half and played extremely well. I know I talked to you yesterday and we talked about the crowd noise and how you really wanted to get in and take them out. What was the conversation with you and your team in the, at the end of that first half? Well, we just knew we had to come out and run the football, be better on offense, basically, and uh, that's what we did. And we played good on defense. And they, they played their hearts out. Syracuse, you got to give them a lot of credit. In a ball game you look at like this, you look at the second half, you think the keys are the adjustments you have to make. What was the most important adjustment you think you made? We didn't make a lot of adjustments. We just executed better with what we did. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stewart and Sapp, talk about their play. Well, they both played extremely well. It's, uh, you know, James came out, run the ball. Of course, Warren always plays well. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Your standings now in the Big East Conference. Miami remaining undefeated. Syracuse dropping to four and one, and the Canes are in pretty good shape. Now we invite you to stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. Your final score 27 to 6, Miami over Syracuse. <laughs> 